Eight years ago, I posted my first post on Facebook. It got one comment and one share. My dreams of becoming a multi-million dollar artist, partying on boats with OnlyFans people, got immediately shattered into little chunks of misery. Now, at that time, I was studying art in university and I was started to get frustrated because they didn't actually teach me anything about marketing my art, about social media, about the business side of the art. And so it didn't took long before I decided to quit university. Now, this made me even more scared because now I didn't have a backup plan anymore and I had to figure out how to make this art career work. And so I started posting on all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus and eventually TikTok and YouTube. And in those first couple of years, nothing seemed to be working. I was getting 100 likes or something and I was putting in so much more work to get barely any results back. And so I felt very frustrated and at the same time I was looking at these child prodigy artists like Mozart for example who already became famous before their 18th birthday. And so that made me feel like I was getting too old to really become an artist, to chase this art career. Now on the bright side, my dreams were still alive. I still wanted to become a full-time international artist, partying on boats with OnlyFans people. And so what do you do when you have dreams, but no way to reach them? Well, I started to learn as much as I could about social media. I started to watch all the videos from Sonny Lena Dusi, Think Media, Vanessa Law, Hey Dominic, Nick Neiman, Channel Makers, Film Boot, Roberta Blake, Paddy Gallery, Natalie Ellis, and much more. And these YouTube videos were extremely helpful, but only in the first couple of months, because what happened was I started to notice that all of these videos were sharing extremely basic information and all of them were kind of copy pasting one another. And on top of that, I also noticed that the art establishment wasn't believing in social media the same way I was believing in social media. And so I started to doubt whether or not this was the right trajectory. I remember this one quote from an Art Basel representative, Princess Alia Al Sinusi. And she said, connecting isn't the same as networking and making true junctions is a pillar of the art world. Some say it can and will be done through social media. I say it's through the same tried and true handshake and kiss. After all, that's how the saying goes. You had me at hello. Now this is a scary idea coming from a pretty powerful person suggesting that the handshake and kiss will never go away. And so what do you do when the art establishment thinks that you're on the wrong track? Well, I just kept on going and tried to figure out how this social media thing really worked. I went to the next best thing that promised me more in-depth information than videos, namely books. And so I started to read all the marketing books, all the social media books that I could get my hands on. Books like The YouTube Secret, Crushing It, Show Your Work and many, many more. And although some of these books had very powerful insights, a new problem started to arise. Here's the thing with writing. It takes two years to write a book and then it takes another year before it lands on the shelves. And so by the time it lands in my hands, it's at least five years old. And the problem with social media is that it is evolving so extremely fast that a book that is five years old is outdated. And so I was reading all these strategies that worked on Instagram five years ago, but were not working anymore in today's landscape. And so none of the information actually worked. All of my posts were not getting enough likes, not getting enough comments, not getting enough shares. And because of that, I started to doubt myself. Here's what was happening. I was checking my phone several times a day. And every time that I was checking my phone, I was looking at the lack of likes and confronting myself with these feelings. And so I started to doubt myself several times a day and there's only so much you can take before it will break you, before it will to some extent destroy you. And so this is exactly what was happening with me. I started to doubt so much and care so much about other people's opinions, namely likes, that it broke me to some extent. And this is especially a problem for creative people because they have such a strong imagination that they can envision the worst case scenario very, very vividly. And so this is what was happening. I was imagining that I would be a failure for the rest of my life. What if I was too old to make this social media thing work? What if it was too late to make the social media thing work? What if I was wasting the best years of my life to this thing that would never happen? What if, what if, what if? But the strong imagination also meant that the dream was still alive. I still wanted to become an established artist, front cover of the New York Times, benefiting from all kinds of strange and crazy money strategies like the Dali restaurant secret, for example. Did you know that Salvador Dali found a way to never pay for his dinner? 
So here's what he would do. He would go to fancy restaurants and then pay for everybody's meal by writing a check, but not just any check. No, he would make a doodle on the back of the check and then he would hand it over. But because the doodle was worth more than the check itself, the restaurant owner would never cash it in. Hence, free dinners. Anyway, back to the main story. What do you do if you have dreams but no way to reach them? Well, I went for the next best thing, namely online courses. I was always attracted to these online courses where influencers with millions of followers were teaching how to get millions of followers. There was only one problem. I did not have tens of thousands of dollars to spend on these online courses. Long story short, without going into too much detail, I made some dumb decisions, but it resulted in me having access to those courses worth thousands of dollars a couple of weeks later. Now, the one question on everybody's mind, are these online courses where you pay $2,000 or $3,000 for the course any good? And as you might expect, most of these courses were kind of a little bit of a scam in that they didn't really provide any information worth anything. But luckily there were a couple of courses that actually shared secrets that were worth way more than the price of the course itself. Let me explain you one of those secrets, namely the Instagram Mastermind Engagement Group. So here's what this influencer that had at that time 3.6 million Instagram followers would do to get her followers and to get her posts going viral every single time. So she would create groups of 10 to 15 people that she called Instagram masterminds. And these people would have the same type of pages, the same style, the same everything as the page that she was trying to blow up. And then what would happen is that whenever she made an Instagram post or an Instagram reel or whatever, she would go into those groups and ask the members of those groups to like, comment, engage with the post. Now, here's the thing. She would not just have one of those groups, but she would have thousands of those groups. And so if you do the math, 15 to 10 members multiplied by thousands of those groups, that's like tens of thousands of likes that she could potentially get. And so she would use a portion of her Instagram masterminds every time she posted, which meant that she would get 10 to 15,000 likes, comments, shares initially, all the way in the beginning of that post, which was enough to push that post into virality. And so now I had a strategy to make my post go viral every single time, but there was one problem. And that is that this strategy felt like a scam, it felt like betrayal, it felt like something dirty that I should not really be part of. And on top of that, it also felt like Instagram betrayed me for allowing these people to have those strategies because it's obvious that if you don't use those strategies, you simply can't compete with them because it's that lucrative, it's that beneficial. And so now I'm left with not a strategy that I can use and a bad feeling that I have been wasting my time on Instagram. But I somehow did felt like I was getting closer to my goals, my dreams of becoming one of the best artists of our time, front cover of the Freezer magazine, dating the hottest girls in the industry. Now, as much as I would like to say that I've achieved this state by the time that I'm recording this video, I did not, but I did become a full-time artist. I did won a lot of awards. I have exhibited my work in galleries and some of my posts went viral, reaching millions of views on TikTok, for example. And on YouTube, I'm growing almost a thousand subscribers every single month. And so in the second part of this video, I want to give you three strategies that are going to enable you to become a full-time artist and get the same social media results that I got. The first rule is to understand that the quality of the art that you make doesn't actually matter as much as you think. The art critic Anthony Hayden Guest once said, a basic talent for making art is not necessarily the top requirement for having a successful art career, by which I don't mean making money, but making work. At any decent art school graduate show, you'll see work as well made as you will see in galleries, but few of those graduates will become artists. And so what can we learn from that? Well, skill is simply overrated. Skill is not one of the foundational things that you need in order to get success. In other words, there is no point in waiting until you're good enough before you start posting your work online, which is exactly what the majority of you are doing. According to my poll, 38% of artists are waiting to promote their art online until they feel good enough. 
Now, if this is you, then you will be waiting for the rest of your life because you will simply change your standards of what good enough means and that feeling will never go away. If I had waited until I felt good enough to promote my art, I would still be crying like a baby in a crib somewhere in the world right now. It might be worth watching this section again because for 38% of you, I actually believe it can change the entire course of your life. And art schools don't talk enough about these marketing related topics. The second rule is to stop making content about your own art. If you look at my old Facebook post, you see that I was constantly making posts about my artwork and as a result nobody cared and nobody liked the post. What you should be doing instead is making content that people want to watch that provides value to them. And so what does that mean providing value? Well in essence there are two ways to provide value. You can either make educational content where you teach them something or you can make entertaining content. And so instead of making posts about your art what you could have done or what I could have done in the time is making posts where I explain how how I made the artwork so that collectors, gallerists, artists can learn from the process of making art. Billionaire Ali Broad once said, for businesses to be successful, they need to constantly be asking, how can we provide value to the customer? At the end of the day, that is what matters. The third rule is to understand that there's an 80-20 principle when it comes to your social media posts. 20% of your posts will be responsible for 80% of your subscribers. 20% of your posts will be responsible for 80% of your profits and 20% of your social media pages will get you 80% of your results. Researchers observe this tendency to go towards the Pareto distribution everywhere in life, including in social media. And so as an artist, it becomes very important to understand which 20% of actions, 20% of platforms, 20% of posts will get you 80% of your results. And one of the most important decisions to benefit from this 80-20 principle is choosing the right platform. When I chose Instagram, I chose it because it was the popular platform. I didn't knew that it was a rigged game. And then I started posting on it and didn't got any results and got frustrated. And when I did the same thing on TikTok, I got millions of views on my posts, went viral and got 20K followers in eight weeks time. The same thing on Instagram would have gotten me 60 likes or 60 views and 20 followers or something. This is the power of the 80-20 principle. Choosing the right platform is more important than hashtags, captions, the quality of your pictures, the quality of your art, comments, strategies, building relationships, all of that combined. And so what I would recommend is to test out all the social media platforms in existence and then see which one works best and then choose that one. And the problem with this is that you have to spend months testing out all the platforms. And so in an ideal world, I would be doing that for you. I would be showing you which platforms still have organic reach and which platforms are what we call dead platforms. On which platforms can you go viral today and on which platforms could you go viral in 1954. And luckily, I already did that in a video called How Artists Can Sell Our True Content Creation. And also a little bit, but in a lesser degree, in how I became a full-time artist and gained 50k followers. I'll link both videos in the end screen and in the description. That's it. Get the hell out of here.